part of me was in shock and sort of closing down, no sleep. But the other half of me was like, I need to survive, I need to survive. And, and I was, you know, Googling what's unexplained death in childhood and just felt that I needed to speak to other people who'd gone through the same thing. So I was not going to rest until I'd actually spoken to someone that had gone through the same thing as us. Um, and, you know, I, I sat with Rex in my arms for probably two hours thinking, this is just unbelievable. I have to make something good come out of this tragedy for me, but also the family and all the, you know, other bit, other, you know, grandparents, siblings, uncles, aunts, everyone. Well, both the Lullaby Trust and SUTC Foundation put us in contact with the different people who'd gone through the same thing. So that's two families in the UK who I spoke to. Um, and one of them was raising money for a first study at Great Ormond Street, um, looking into sudden unexplained death in childhood. So that really helped me focus in those beginning days of thinking, OK, what can I do? Raise money um, for the first study in, into sudden unexplained death. And instead of asking people for flowers, I said, please donate whatever you can to this first study. Um, and that kept me really busy. And the, it went viral, basically, and we managed to raise you know, a substantial amount of money. And, and the, the, um, the Great Ormond Street um, um, study is going ahead now and should be published in September. It's a retrospective study, so it's looking at all lots of post-mortems of, you know, up to, I think it's 900 children unexpected deaths and so that they can you know look at compare them all so hopefully you know similarities will come out and they'll start trying to understand what triggers there are and hopefully that will help us be able to predict it and then eventually one day prevent it. Um, definitely meeting other parents who've gone through exactly the same as us so losing a child over one um, I went to a conference in America run by the SUDC Foundation recently and they ran a, a scientific day, a medical conference and a family day. I've never been in a room with a hundred parents who've lost a child and the energy changed. It's not that it was really depressing, it was just surreal in the fact that we'd all gone through this horrendous life-changing thing. And it suddenly became very emotional. We all had these little tea lights and we'd all designed our own votive tea light and we walked to the front and said our child's name. And it had been a really sort of happy, joyous occasion beforehand and then you saw these parents coming back and in floods of tears and it, just the atmosphere. I don't think I'll ever be, hopefully it'd never be in a room with 100 parents who've all lost a child. But it just went, goes to show we all had little um, badges of our child on us and people would come up and say, you're Rex's mummy. And you know, I haven't been called Rex's mummy for two years. And that is so special that, you know, you're not Camilla, you're Rex's mummy. And, and same, I can recognise their child. And their life lives on through what you're doing, I suppose. Um, and you know, you've got those friends across the whole world, world some from Australia, uh, America, Canada, Europe. It's incredible, the network now. So we're stronger together. <laughs>